Welcome to the BioWhisper channel, and the topic today is on the history of biotechnology from a perspective overview. This video clip is devoted to educators to help learners get a quick historical perspective. Although much of modern biotechnology does deal with manipulating DNA, classical biotechnology began long before we even knew about genes or chromosomes. The discoveries made by accident by humans since dawn of civilization were incorporated into daily life. Processes like fermentation techniques were practiced by Egyptians who used yeasts for baking bread, as well as the Chinese brewbeer using fermentation methods. How does it all begin? The spark of innovation and discovery might well be explained as the early magical period of serendipity, which is defined as an unplanned fortunate event of discovery of something pleasant. One famous example occurred back then in 1928, at St. Mary's Hospital, London, where Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin. This discovery led to the introduction of antibiotics that greatly reduced the number of deaths from infection. It began as an accident, a surprising accident where he experienced contamination in his bacterial culture plates. How? A mold which was not wanted, contaminated one of my culture plates. How it produced an effect which demanded investigation. These are questions as well as noted penned in Alexander Fleming's Nobel Lecture. Fast track forward to today, we see modern biotechnology now includes technology to enhance everything from farming to pharmaceuticals. Since the work of Mendel in the 19th century, that every life form contained within itself the blueprint for reproducing itself. Mendel laid out a structure of rules governing the transmission of this information due to his careful observations of the pea plants by purposeful cross-pollination across generations. Whilst we know more about the Herdans patterns also known as Mendelian patterns, only till much later, on with sophisticated genetic techniques, microscopy as well as molecular biology advances, are we really able to understand why we are observing these genetic transmission patterns. In fact, it also helped us understand transmission in non-Mendelian means. In 1953 that two researchers working at Oxford, Francis Crick and George Watson, finally uncovered the precise shape and function of the DNA molecule. This was the now famous double helix, roughly the shape of a spiral staircase. The arrangement of these nucleic acids in specific sequences carries all the detailed information necessary for the construction of a new organism, the genetic code. Genomics build upon the study of the genetic code for a better understanding. Key events include the discovery of alternative splicing from 1977. Moreover, Carrie Mullis invented the PCR technique in 1985, which builds upon the discovery of DNA polymerase by Arthur Kornberg in 1956. Paul Berg worked on recombinant DNA that launched the field of molecular biology around that period. Advances in sequencing concerning the determination of base sequences in nucleic acids won accolades for Walter Gilbert and Frederick Sanger. The interest followed by the complete sequencing of the human genome, as well as that of model organisms like mammal mouse, the fly Drosophila, the model weed Arabidopsis has bettered our understanding of development processes as well as diseases in aspects of pharmacogenomic personalization of therapies for the patient's profile. Debates, discussions and implications including the ethical considerations started when Dolly, the first mammal cloned from an adult cell, was born. It took 277 attempts to clone Dolly, and for a while she was arguably the world's most famous sheep. The birth of Dolly and the new understanding of the opportunity to change the functioning of cells made researchers consider other possible ways of modifying cells. Back in 2000, a team from the Human Genome Project working with biotech firm Celera Genomics announced that they had completed the first draft of a sequencing of the human genome. More recently, a team calling themselves Telomere to Telomere, or the T2T consortium suggest their work was only possible because they had use of new technology developed by Oxford Nanopore and Pacific Biosciences, the new technology allowed for sequencing without cutting the DNA into pieces. It instead ran the DNA through a nanoscopic hole with lasers reading the sequences repeatedly to reduce errors. They also claim that the number of known bases has now grown from 2.92 billion to 3.05 billion, and the number of known genes has increased by 0.4%. In the screenshot from the New York Times, it is mentioned that an additional 100 genes has been identified from the deeper analyses carried out by the team of researchers. 
The discovery of CRISPR, Ca9, made in 2012, provided the foundation for gene editing to make specific changes to genomic DNA sequences. The CRISPR approach is far more efficient and technically simpler than earlier methods. Researchers are armed with reliable and efficient tools to be able to alter DNA to correct genetic defects in animals and modify DNA sequences. However, there is a chance that this technique might be applied in humans was an inevitable result of rapid advances in genetic engineering technologies. With little being known about its safety, and its use to edit human DNA renewed ethical concerns, particularly about whether genetic engineering technologies should be used to modify non-disease traits. Efforts are made to call for a moratorium on human genome editing the reports of Rouge scientists have been reported including Dr. Hijiankli given imprisonment. Genetic engineering also requires the rigorous and rational analysis of the ethical issues that will enable an effective and foolproof regulatory framework to be established. Three-dimensional, 3D, bioprinting, an additive manufacturing-based technique of biomaterials fabrication, adds on the ability of producing regenerative tissues and organs using biocompatible materials, cells and supporting components into complex 3D functional living tissue. This has helped made this technology a pioneer to the creation of artificial multicellular tissues or organs, with a vision for eventual regenerative medicine. The innovation of 3D printing and biology has disclosed new directions in tissue regeneration and organ construction. Improvements are constantly being made in the areas of designing appropriate bioinks and tissue constructions. As technology matures, we can envision improving the structure resolution, conserving the cell viability, and reducing the fabrication time. At least to date as of 2021, bioprinting has also generated a buzz around its potential for the generation of complex organs, which could be used for in vivo implantation in the near future. Biotechnology brings along its benefits lowering our environmental footprint and helping treat disease and illness. As an evolving field of science, we see main concerns revolve around ethical, safety, bioterrorism and environmental issues. Issues that resonate includes health care and equitable access, such as HIV drug access to developing nations in Africa with looming patent litigation over cheap generic copies of branded HIV drugs by big pharma companies where options including having a licensing model in discussion is seen as a more sustainable solution. For the environmental concerns, having genetically modified organisms, Crops in particular might bring along higher yields, better disease resistance and higher quality, and help in combating droughts and food security. In Western nations, DDT toxicity and its release into the environment has a chance of upsetting food chains with bioaccumulation. Finally, frameworks for enforcement, management with ethical considerations including having fair and equitable access. One instance is fair distribution of COVID vaccines with Gavi platform. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to this channel for future updates.